Breaking new tonight, the Oswego County Legislature calling a special meeting for this Thursday, nearly one week after we first learned about the disturbing death of a 17-year-old boy with cerebral palsy in May 2021. His mother and his stepfather charged last week with manslaughter and criminally negligent homicide. And this meeting comes as many ask this question. Did the Department of Social Services do its job in the months and years before Jordan Brooks' death? News Channel 9's Adrian Smith has been digging into the report, detailing just how neglected Jordan was in the years before he died, and joins us live tonight from the Oswego County DSS building in Mexico. Adrian, fill us in. Well, Christy, the 14 page child fatality report that was conducted by the New York State Office of Children and Family Services six months after Jordan's death in May of 2021 further confirms the concern surrounding his care and the condition that he was in before his death. Jordan was diagnosed with cerebral palsy at birth. His whole life, he was restricted to a wheelchair and required significant care when it came to eating, bathing, and going to the bathroom. At the time of his death, documentation obtained by law enforcement, medical providers, and the medical examiner say Jordan weighed only 55 pounds. This fatality report concludes Jordan was last seen in person by a pediatrician in September of 2020, where he reportedly weighed 114 pounds, according to his mother. Although Jordan was considered to be medically fragile, there were no recent records to show Jordan was seen by a doctor in the months leading up to his death. Following the autopsy, documentation revealed in this report shows Jordan suffered from bed sores covering his body, some of which were so severe his bones were exposed through his skin, the most prominent being his tailbone. Hardware from his hip implant was also exposed through the skin and open. Photos taken by law enforcement showed Jordan's back was also red and bleeding, and sores covered his buttocks. They describe his body as appearing emaciated. Jordan's wheelchair was also covered in urine. The seat cushion was black and covered in mold. News Channel 9 has been reaching out to Oswego County lawmakers since last week to react to Jordan's death. We haven't heard back from many of them, but we are hearing tonight from the Oswego County Chairman Jim Weatherup on Jordan's death. And we want to make it clear that this was a pre recorded statement sent to media. We were not invited to any sort of briefing and were not able to ask any follow up questions. In the wake of this tragedy, Oswego County is examining the actions of the DSS Child Protective Services and other agencies that provided services to Jordan. Despite this tragic case, our CPS investigators remain committed to keeping our children safe. On average, they investigate over 3,000 complaints each year, a difficult and daunting responsibility, during which over one-third of them are found to be valid. Coming up tonight on News Channel 9 at 6 o'clock, I'm going to have more on that state report for you and the discrepancies between witness statements we obtained last week and the final visit by DPS that was conducted 30 days before Jordan's death. Live in Mexico tonight, Adrian Smith, News Channel 9. Adrian, thank you very much and continued great work. As News Channel 9 first told you last night, the Liverpool Central School District filed five complaints with the Onondaga County Department of Social Services when Jordan and his family lived in the town of Salina. Jordan attended first through sixth grade at Chestnut Hill Elementary School and seventh grade at Chestnut Hill Middle before he left the district in August 2018. Well, we just received a statement from the Onondaga County District Attorney Bill Fitzpatrick who says, quote, I would caution people not to jump to any conclusions as I have seen nothing to date to suggest the child's needs were ignored in Onondaga County and in fact the complaints were addressed. And the community is coming together to remember Jordan. A vigil is planned for Saturday 7:30 p.m. right on the front lawn of Mexico High School. Everyone is welcomed.